Good afternoon. Welcome to this episode of Living the Little Way. Uh, we've got a little role reversal going on here. Uh, this is our, what do we say, 95th, 95th episode? 95th episode. 95th episode of Living the Little Way. And this will be Father Kevin's last episode with us. Um, so I thought we'd go back and kind of talk about some of the things that we've done over the last few years here with Living the Little Way and some of our other media uh, ministry things that we've created because uh, we've really come a long way in a very short time. I, yes, we have. I, I think, you know, if I look back to the time that we stepped off the diving board, so to speak, it was just a little over two years ago uh, when we really got going full tilt. And of course, it was COVID that um, kind of was the impetus for us getting going to begin with. Yeah, when COVID hit, we, uh, we knew we had to do something to, to keep people connected. Um, you, with your background in psychology, you predicted a lot of the things that we've seen in our society that have come from those lockdowns. Some of the disassociation, the huh. depression, the disconnecting from each other. Um, so, you know, we really tried to find some way to do that. And I got to give you a lot of credit. Uh, because you were very forward-thinking in that, because um, we really hadn't done anything like this before. Um, no, we really hadn't. We, uh, I remember that very first uh, mass that we uh, streamed, and it was on an iPhone, yeah. um, and we didn't even have, as I recall, a tripod that first session, and we had to go out and locate one, and you know, every little advance we made, we felt like we were on top of the world. You know, <laughs> right. wow, this is so different than it was before. And now you look back and it was almost like, uh, you know, just very, very good things, but very primitive in the technology we had available. You know, as, as the editor, I look back at some of those early pieces we did and I just kind of cringed at the quality compared to what we have now because of the equipment we have. But what I've realized as I've been going back through some of these old episodes and some of the old pieces we did, the quality really wasn't the point. The quality the of the content that we did yeah. um, was so timely and you could really see the Holy Spirit working through the things that we did, how timely they became um, in helping people get through that. And I think even now, once we started The Little Way, that was a big step for us. We're going to do a weekly production, um, which means you have to have a weekly schedule to get this stuff get done. done. Um, and you know, it was not, I, at first I think it was kind of daunting because we were thinking, okay, what are we going to do? What subjects are we going to broach? And then we listed 5, 10, 15 that were on top of our list. And then we said, well, now what? Uh, but it seemed like the Holy Spirit was always at work giving us one idea after the next about what we could be doing. Indeed. And the feedback that we received from people with other ideas of, well, I'd like to know more about this, I'd like to know more about that. A lot of that's what led to us making the shift in format to where we now have the apologetic question. Yep. Um, and using this as an opportunity to kind of talk about some of those tenets of our faith that maybe we don't think about. Talk a little bit about, about the value you see in that. Well, I think that the more you have exposure to what our faith is about and what our faith holds dear to us, the more exposure you have to uh, the Eucharist, the more exposure you have to uh, the various uh, ministries that have been kicked off by being involved, the better off you are. And so um, every little step that we took added something new. Um, and as, we, as I look back on it, um, I am amazed at not only the content, but also the quality of the production, you know, that the way you can um, eradicate mistakes, the way that you can weave things in and out. Uh, and it's just a, a seamless process. And I think that there are a lot of people that have come to rely on that weekly um, catechetical piece that we do 
um, and in addition to that, the various other longer productions that we've uh, made over the course of the last three years. So, and, you know, we always talk about meeting people where they are, and you know, there, there's a real reality that we spend a lot of time on our phones and on our devices. Um, more Why than, not channel that? Right, mm -hmm. exactly. More than we should probably, but if that's where people are. That's where you're going to reach them. You know, it's the same technology that can bring very bad things into our life and also the same technology that brings very good um, things. And so I think we have to be focusing on the fact that if Christ were evangelizing today, he'd probably be using YouTube. Uh, he'd build the, the individual relationships, but he'd still use YouTube. I remember I was talking about this program with my father the other day. And he said, well, yeah, what was the name of that guy that was on TV all the time when I was a kid? I said, well, I don't know who you're talking about. Uh, so Bishop well, Sheen? Archbishop Fulton Sheen. He was uh. kind of one of the pioneers of that media ministry. And he reached a lot of people. Yes, he did. And a lot of them who weren't even Catholic. And people would look forward every Sunday or Saturday night, I can't remember which day of the week it was, that they would be there to watch him talk and watch him preach and watch him talk about Christ. Um, one of the things that I've noticed is that our young people, when they've been on these programs, and they've been on a lot of them, bring a dimension to it that you don't always find mm -hmm. in productions of this type. They prove to us, you know, that, wait a second, they really do know their faith, and they do practice their faith, and that they do uh, stand up and, and, and are counted. Um, and I think when um, older people see that, it makes them stand back and say, well, yeah, this is worth it. It's worth it to educate our young. So um, I think we've done some wonderful, wonderful things. You know, it's very much like a marriage, you know, for better, for worse, <laughs> you know, in sickness and health, you know, uh, in poverty and rich times, all of those things. But yet we've stuck to it, and that's what I think is important. And it has enriched this parish you know, greatly. Um, and so one of my greatest hopes is that we continue in that direction. Um, and I think we have to be very mindful and intentional to make sure that that happens. Well, now you mentioned it. We come to the bittersweet part of this episode. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, we're, we have to say goodbye to you. Uh, I know you're not going far, uh, but... Um, Just down the road. Really, you're not ever saying goodbye to anybody. Um, you know, that old saying, it's not goodbye, it's so long, or right. adios, or right. that type of thing. But um, that's really what it is. You know, I remember when I came from St. Nicholas up here to St. Therese, it was... It was hard for me at first to get used to the east side. I'd never lived here. Um, it was hard, you know, to be way up north and uh, way to the east. But as time went on, it engrosses you and it um, almost snags you in, you know, mm -hmm. and you find yourself no longer standing back, looking and saying, well, what's going to happen? What's next? You just enmesh yourself in it. So when you say the bittersweet part, you know, it's time to say goodbye. Well, yes, it's time to say you're going on to a different ministry and different priests will now be here in this parish doing God's work as well. And, you know, that's the important thing. It's if you go, if I'm here or if uh, Father King or Father Cowles or Father Ronick are here. It's the same liturgy. It's the same uh, belief in the Trinity and in the uh, dual nature of Christ's uh, uh, personality. It's about it's the mystery of salvation and the Eucharist. It's not something different at all. It's not like, and, and again, I, I may sound like I'm somewhat uh, biased on this, but it's not like going from one of the uh, churches that has a particular bent on this, that, or the other mm -hmm. thing. It's what the Catholic Church has always taught. 
Right. And that's, I think that's the most important message that, that people need to remember is, yes, we're going to miss you, but Jesus is still in that tabernacle. And it's not he, about Father Odell. It's about Jesus Christ. And mm -hmm. it's about how I can, you can, all of us can be better ministers of how we communicate about him to others. Um, and you know something, I, I often remember um, Monsignor Mahold, he talked about in his older years about diminishment and how um, he wasn't able to do the same things that he used to do. But I think until the very day that he died, the very day that Monsignor Doyle died, the very day that um, Monsignor McEnany died, they were all preaching about Christ in one way or another. So that's hopefully what all of us are going to do right up to the day we die, preach about Jesus Christ. Well, Father, thank you for the last six years. You've been a, a wonderful mentor to me personally. Um, you've been a wonderful shepherd uh, for this parish. And I can truly say you, you've left all of us, not just the parish, but all of us personally better than you found us. Well, I thank you for saying that. And, you know, the, the situation on my part is probably much more intense than the, the touch you guys have had on me. Um, and, you know, that's I, I, really what it's all about is that we love each other. That doesn't mean we always get along with each other. It means that we are all in this together. And that at the end of the day, no matter what may have not gone right, we're, oh, I'm sorry for this, or I please forgive me for that, and we move forward. Mm -hmm. So I thank all of you. I thank you, Thane, and you, Joanne, for uh, all of the many things you've done for me. Um, I also thank all of the other people that have worked here, um, you know, that have been part of this ministry. And most of all, I thank the people of St. Therese. Uh, you truly are an exceptional parish. I got a question for you today, Father Odell. Why do Catholics have crucifixes everywhere instead of just a cross? Well, the crucifix represents uh, Jesus Christ crucified. Uh, the corpus or the body of Christ is on the cross. It reminds us of Christ's great sacrifice of suffering. A cross that's empty reminds us of the resurrection that Jesus Christ is now risen. So in reality, you know, both are good manifestations of certain mysteries uh, that we hold dear in our Catholic faith. Most often we see uh, crucifixes because we focus on the great gift of salvation Christ gave us through his suffering and death on the cross, which we carry now in our souls forward to eternity. Well, Father, thank you. Would you like to close us in prayer? Sure. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord, protect and guide and love this parish and help it continue to do the marvelous and majestic things that it's done and you know since the time that it was formed but certainly in my time uh, having seen it with my own two eyes I'm truly amazed please protect that and help it continue to grow help every member of this parish get to heaven uh, help every one of us uh, confess our sins and receive the Eucharist and be good to other people. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.